And welcome inside Extreme Action Park in scenic Fort Lauderdale, Florida for what promises to be a world-class night of mixed martial arts inside the cage. It's Titan FC 54. Hey everybody, I'm Jay Adams alongside the champ. We've been waiting a long time to say that word. Kamaru, the Nigerian nightmare, Usman taking the strap from Tyrone Woodley. The 170 pound strap is yours, sir. You don't know how long I've been waiting to hear those words. I mean, people call me that here and there, but it's just, at that point, it's just a figure of speech. But now, I actually feel it. I feel it. All that hard work has paid off. I went out there and became what I said and what I set out to do, and that is the welterweight champion of the world. I'm just blessed right now to be in the position that I'm at, to not only be the champion, but have the platform to be able to touch and motivate lives all across the world. When they put that belt around you, it was one of the most emotional moments of the year. Uh, there was not too many dry eyes in the house, especially for people who knew how hard you had worked to get to that stage. All right, let's take a look at the card tonight because it is one heck of a card. You got in the featherweight division, Salvador versus Porter. Kenny Porter is going to be very tough in that fight. And of course, you got Matthew Wagey. He's fought all over the place. Team Alpha Male, American Top Team. Yadir Terry is his opponent tonight. You got Salma versus Lawson. Lawson, Division One NCAA stud in wrestling. That's going to be a very, very interesting matchup. And of course, Stitt versus Stevens at welterweight is a good scrap as well. Colin Luberts, who's been winning lately, is stepping in against a very tough Ainge Losa. Webb versus Nazaroff. Fortuna versus. Mikolaitis and Gomez versus Burns, which is our feature fight of the night. Quality scrap there. And of course, our co-main and main event belts are at stake. The interim lightweight belt is at stake with Felipe Buacao Douglas versus the turn, Hafiel Alves. And of course, we got Franza versus Suarez. Suarez will be defending his belt and Ariston Franza looking to come into America and upset him. Absolutely, and it, we've got Herbert Burns taking on Luis Gomez. And that's not the main event fight. Know. You know, that's the third fight. And we've got two other fights to go after that fight. That is one of the fights that I'm looking for the most on this card. But we've got Jason Suarez, I mean, a guy that's gone out there and continued to just deliver time and time again, has kept that undefeated record. And tonight, he's looking to just show the world that, hey, he belongs on that next level. But he's got a tough outing tonight. Yeah, Jason Suarez at 12 and 0, never been defeated and looking to hold on to that belt and make a big impression because the big boss is in the house tonight. Absolutely. I mean, tonight you can't hold back. This is your essential, your audition for that next level. So you've got to go out there, put everything on the line, and really let the boss know that you belong at the next level. Right next door to Extreme Action Park is Hard Knocks 365. We're going to be meeting one of their fighters in a second. Right now, though, we want to take a look at the weigh-ins, which took place from She's a 10, and they were intense. Absolutely. As you see there, Herbert Burns and Luis Gomez, both guys just physical specimen. Both guys have the skills. And tonight, they want to let everyone know that, hey, we belong on that next level. You see Bukal leaving that hand hanging there. <laughs> Bad blood right there. Intensity for sure. And, of course, Jason Suarez. Look at the intensity there. Oh, man, he's a guy that's always intense. When he steps in the cage, it's all business for him. And you can see it just by that look on his face. Ariston Franza realizes this is the opportunity of a lifetime to come in and upset the Titan FC champ. And, of course, Jason Suarez is going to do everything he can to make sure that doesn't happen here tonight. You know, as we were saying earlier, right next door to Extreme Action Park, is Hard Knocks 365, one of the best schools in the state of Florida, pumping out a lot of great fighters who are definitely looking at the UFC. And one of those fighters we had a chance to catch up with earlier on, Savage Kenny Porter. Tale of the tape here for this featherweight matchup between Dylan Salvador and Savage Kenny Porter. You can see Salvador making his debut here tonight against the 3-0 Kenny Porter. 
Uh, Salvador with a little bit of a height advantage over the 29-year-old, but the reach is negligible. This will be a great scrap, and this tail of the tape brought to you by It's a 10, Truly Miracle Hair Care. Rodolfo Roman, let's get her started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Titan FC 54. We are live on UFC Fight Pass from the Extreme Action Park in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We begin tonight's action with a contest in the featherweight division. Introducing first, Dylan Salvador. Dylan Salvador now stepping into the Extreme Action Park Arena, making his debut here tonight. Stands five foot nine. He's got a 71 inch reach. He says, I love fighting after all my Muay Thai wins and championships. And I now want to make a name for myself in MMA. So the stand up game is, uh, is going to be there for the young Salvador. But uh, the, the big question mark here tonight, Kamara, will be his ground game. Yeah, I mean, he's got a tough out in here tonight. Kenny, I mean, Kenny Porter is no joke. I mean, this guy works hard. He's got the work ethic. He's got the striking. He's got the grappling. He's got the wrestling. You know, and, and you know, his opponent, he, you, you've got to go out there being able to disrupt that. This is your, it shows this is a professional debut. So if you're going out there in your professional debut and you're fighting a guy that, that's gotten it done a couple of times, you've got to go in there and be patient. But at the same time, you've got to know what you came to do, and you've got to look to implement that game plan from start to finish. Dylan Salvador uh, tells me that he has got 80 wins in Muay Thai and only 16 losses. He's the two-time world champion in Muay Thai, and he's a tournament glorier winner in Muay Thai as well. So, you know, the, the pedigree in the sport of Muay Thai is there, but what we're going to have to really keep our eyes on is the ground game because Savage Kenny Porter, you know, training at Hard Knocks 365 is going to be training with some of the best wrestlers in the world. So well, that'll be the big I question mean, mark. I mean, you know, some of the best in the world. You know, he's a, he's a tough guy, very, very tough individual, but he's got to go out there and get it done tonight against Kenny Porter, and that's no easy task. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Kenny Porter. Savage Kenny Porter, fighting originally out of uh, old camp Spartanburg, South Carolina, or his old camp was in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Now, as we had said earlier, fighting under the very capable tutelage of Henry Hooft, Greg Jones, Tony Villani, Kami Barzini. Uh, you know, really one of the top-notch schools in the country. And, uh, and he's young, he's 27 years old, he's undefeated. Very, very serious and a good kid, too. Good kid. Excellent guy. I mean, uh, you know, one of those guys that, that assimilated very well, making the transition from his old camp, coming into our camp. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, in our camp, when you come in, you've got high-level coaches, some of the best coaches in the world. All you got to do is be quiet, close your mouth, open your ears, and soak up all the knowledge that you can. And this guy has done that. He's done that. I watched him come in and out in, in the room each and every day, you know, and just, and just soak up as much as he, as he can. If he doesn't know it, he's going to ask questions. And he continues to improve. And, I, you know, I'm looking for him to go out there tonight and really make a statement and show everyone that, you know, he's, he's that guy. He, he's ready to make big leaps in this game and, and, and one day, you know, get to that level where he be believes he belongs. Grew up wrestling D2. He says, I don't wrestle to hold you down. I wrestle to hurt you. And I have respect for Dylan Salvador, but glory kickboxing is different from MMA. And that's what he wants to show him here tonight. Rodolfo Roman. Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is in the featherweight division, scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is making his professional MMA debut. He's a Muay Thai striker who weighed in 146 pounds, fighting out of Gwinnett, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Salvador. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, 
This man walks in undefeated, three wins, no losses. He's a freestyle fighter, weighed in 144.6 pounds, fighting out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Savage Kenny Border. And when the action begins, your referee, Mike Cardoso. Come here, gentlemen. Okay, gentlemen, we've been over the rules in the locker room. Protect yourself at all times, so pay my commands at all times. So if you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck, gentlemen. For my fighter breakdown for Salvador, I believe he's got he's to control the tempo because he's going up against a guy who has already has three professional fights inside the cage. He's got to be able to control the tempo because Porter is going to be looking to come out right away and dictate the pace. That fighter breakdown brought to you by 50 States Vodka. Here we go. This is fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. That's 145 pounds. On the bottom right-hand side of your screen is Dylan Salvador in the white trunks or grayish trunks. And Savage Kenny Porter is in the black board shorts. As you can see, both guys kind of moving around, trying to feel each other out. And this is good. This is good for Salvador because you, you have to do this. You don't want to just jump into a firefight right away when you haven't been professionally inside that mixed martial arts cage. So he's using his experience right now, his striking experience, kind of filling it out, moving side to side, kind of trying to gauge how fast is my opponent, how hard do they really hit. Oh, beautiful trip there. But Kenny Porter's inside on the legs already. Savage Kenny Porter told me he had a fantastic camp. He was training with a guy named Kamaru Usman. I've, I've never I'm, heard of the guy. I've never heard of that guy, but <laughs> I mean, he, he sounds like a, a good guy, yeah. not to mention. If he's Kenny Porter's training with the mixed martial arts with that guy, I'm pretty sure that guy's kind of good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah, and he's a lighter weight, too, so he's dealing with all your skills and your power. Oh, that's a long day, man. I'm sure he's going home tired after that. He, he adapted well. And you can see here, he, he's using that wrestling. He's got to get that head out, but he's got to lock his hands here. Good job by Salvador, really jacking him up. Oh, oh Salvador's got hand. good hands. Flashy, very flashy. Kenny's wow. got to kind of, you know, got to keep his hands up here and clear the cobwebs there because he got stunned there. Good job for him there, turning position, now holding his opponents up and trying to really clear his head here. You know, ooh, big knee there from Salvador. Kamara, that was one of the things that Dylan told me uh, was going to impress us. He said, you guys have never seen me fight. He said, I'm very flashy, I'm very explosive, and I'm very fast, and I come out of the gate really, really hard, and I come out of breaks really hard. And you saw it right there, and, and Kenny's got to be super careful with those elbows. Absolutely, because a lot, of, a lot of guys kind of fall asleep there. They're coming out of a break, they feel like, oh, man, this is my time to reset. So if you're not on your P's and Q's, your opponent's going to light you up right away. Savage Kenny Porter proving how serious he is about the sport of MMA, leaving South Carolina, you know, um, really making a very big risk and coming down and uh, has a new family and really wants to make a name for himself and more importantly, build a career so he can support his kids. He has a, a one and a half year old. Oh, oh boy. Kenny did a great job of, of getting that takedown, locking his hands and really getting that takedown. But he kind of got caught there in, in a Kimura that almost ended the fight. I think he's hurt, too. His right arm is hurt. He saw yeah, him kind of hang, yeah, that, that, hanging there. Because, you know, you know, Salvador had that thing really tight. He twi had that thing twisted up. And, and, and Kenny Porter had to do a couple of rolls there to kind of get out. But he's putting himself here against the gets that cage. Oh, big, big right, right hand, hand from Kenny Porter there. <laughs> the Salvador said, no, no. The Europeans are so art artistic, you know, they're so dramatic. It's like everything is big, broad movements and motions, and they they wear their hearts on their sleeves, a lot of them. I, I, and you see, you see Kenny kind of getting frustrated here. He's switching stands. He, you know, he's kind of dropping his hands. And, and I know that hand might be hurting quite a bit, but you've got to try. This is, this is the time, gut check time. You've got to try to hold your position the best as possible because you don't know what your opponent is feeling as well. Inside Ooh. leg kick, two or three in a row right there from Salvador. Working the legs. I like how he's mixing it up. He's mixing up his attack. He's not going too crazy. He's got the speed. It's there if he needs it. But he's measuring himself very smartly, showing a lot more maturity than uh, you know, a debut would indicate. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, uh, 
Salvador is doing a good job of kind of controlling where this fight takes place. He's moving in and out. He's staying in the center of the cage, which is where he feels he has an advantage. I mean, if he's got over 80-something Muay Thai fights, I would say that's quite a big advantage when you're standing up. But you, you've got Kenny Porter, and Kenny's a wrestler. He needs to be able to keep this fight right here, get it down here, lock your hands, drop down to the legs, be able to lift and get his opponents down on the mat. 20 seconds to go in the opener. Been a little bit sketchy for Kenny Porter, who was favored coming into this fight. Yeah, he, he took some big shots there early on, only on the round. But he, he's up here, got his opponent up against the cage. He's got to look to lock his hands. And if he's not able to, to drop, change levels and get the trip, the takedown, he's got to look for trips there. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at the air. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, Salvador came to win. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of that Rocky thing. Remember when, you know, uh, Apollo Creed goes to his corner and his guys say to, uh, to Apollo Creed, hey, this guy doesn't know this is, uh, you're, you're not supposed to, you're, he's not supposed to win. You know, and Rocky's like Absolutely. taking it to him. He doesn't know he's not supposed to win. No, I mean, he, he definitely has confidence in himself. Action from earlier in the round here. And you can see the tentativeness on Kenny Porter's face. Even when he rocked Salvador, he didn't jump in, didn't come in. It's just a, it's almost like he's, um, He's second-guessing himself. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, he got smoked by a couple of big shots there early on in that round. So what that's going to do is make you second-guess yourself because you don't want to rush in there and get hit with another big shot because you don't know which one's going to put the lights out. So he's got to be more tactical here in this round and, and, and find a way to get that takedown because he's kind of struggling with the fight here in the center of the cage. And it's always hard to fight a guy who's making his debut and might not necessarily have a lot of tape out there on the internet yet. Absolutely. You know, it's hard to, to handicap. It's hard to know what to train when you're in your camp. You got to train everything. And especially a guy like this, because I mean, looking at him from that round, beginning of that round, he looked over here because he knew there was a special guest in the building. And, and he's looking to make this a, a big audition tape for himself. Good job by Kenny Porter, kind of shooting that, that misdirection shot there. It gets around to the corner. And he looks to have top position momentarily, but he's got to pull his opponent away from the fence. You can't let him use the fence to get back up, just like he's doing right now. Yeah, I'm guessing that his in-between round adjustments from Hard Knocks 365 was exactly this. Go to the wrestling. You know, you're a D2 wrestler. Uh, you got all that experience. This guy's coming in from Europe, does not necessarily going to have the ground game, either jits or wrestling. Take advantage of where you're strong. Absolutely, but you can see right away that Salvador has worked on his takedown defense because Kenny Porter is not able to get these takedowns very easily. And when he does get the takedown, he's right back up. So, and that's a tough one. When you're fighting a wrestler who's looking to get takedowns, if you can't keep your opponent down on the mat, it starts to wear on you. Gets in your head. You know, I've shot on this guy seven times and he's been able to uh, defend every single time. What do I need to do to get this guy down? Plus, you're not only is it psychologically wearing on you, it's physically wearing on you. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, Salvador doing a good job of getting down low, changing his uh, center of balance, getting down almost as low as Kenny, making it almost impossible for Kenny to do anything. Yeah, Kenny's kind of having a, a, a struggling right here, trying to get this takedown. But this is where we, we work in our practice gym. If, if that, that one att attempt, that attack is not working, from whether it's the center of the cage or it's up against the cage, you've got to go to two, you've got to go to three. You've got to chain it together to get your opponent down to the ground here. And as you can see, Kenny kind of backs up because he spent a lot of energy trying to get those takedowns. This has put Dylan in trouble a couple oh, of times, but wow. he's so fast back to his feet. So fast. And Kenny, it, it, Kenny's actually... Salvador's looking like the, like the veteran here. Look at that. He's eating up those legs, landing big left hands. Oh, Kenny's got it. Kenny's got it. He's got to change it up. You got to mix it up because right now your opponent has no respect for your stand up and he's just kind of doing whatever he wants. He's able to stuff the takedown, so Ooh, there's no big danger. Elbow there. Yeah, there's no danger. Salvador's starting to bring it. He's starting to bring it. Oh, and he opened up Savage Kenny Porter. He did. And Kenny's, Kenny's got Kenny's to find it here. He's got to find it because Salvador is having his way with him here. 
And you know what's interesting? Oh, good job. The more energy goes out of Kenny Porter, the more Salvador is energized. They're going in opposite directions right now. Absolutely, and that, that's what happens when you have a wrestler trying to take down a guy and he can't get that takedown. If you can't get that takedown, it starts to wear you out. But as you see here, he, he, he took kind of a, he took kind of a bad shot. You, oh man, look at all that blood. He took a bad shot, but Salvador had good hips. He sprawled on top, but you gotta kick away. You can't stay in there and give the wrestler and the grappler a second chance to be able to get the takedown, which is what Kenny Porter utilized there, and now he's got the fight where he wants it, on the ground. It's starting to look like a Quentin Tarantino movie here inside the cage in Fort Lauderdale as uh, they've gotten the chainsaws out and it is getting bloody. The rest probably gonna have to stop the action, although the triangle now coming from the stand-up artist. He's got the triangle, but, but Kenny's got his arm in there and he's able to, to roll out. Boy, this Salvador is surprising everybody here tonight. He is, he, he, you know, he's letting them know that he's more than just a stand-up guy. That even if I am fighting a wrestler and the wrestler does take me down, I've got a lot to offer from my back. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man, man, all that big, blood. big yeah. knee right there in the liver. And oh. it looked like it hurt Kenny, and he's landed big left hands. Wow. Kenny, oh, Kenny's in trouble. He could Kenny take a shot, trouble. but he's eating too many. Man, good job by Salvador. Look at him just floating his hips, heavy hips. He's floating up and around and landing strikes as well. Uh, landing strikes. Uh, this is just a beautiful performance right now. From a guy relatively coming in, that, that the underdog. He's yeah, looking he like was, he's a seasoned no veteran no right no now. Need. Yeah, he was, I mean, just his composure. He's, he's looking to finish this thing here in the second round. He 10 is, seconds to go. He is, and, and Kenny's trying to hang in there. There's a lot of blood Boy, coming Kenny's out of tough. Kenny Porter. That's a good thing Kenny keeps shooting, though. That's keeping the referee from stopping it. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's working. He's letting the referee know that, uh, yeah, I'm in danger, but at the same time, I'm not out of it. I'm still here. And don't be surprised if they, uh, if they're, they're not just the doctor's going to look at him, but the team's going to take a very close look at him because if he's taking too much punishment, uh, it's not unheard of that the team will protect one of their star pupils. And as you see the replay here, that beautiful elbow from Salvador and two elbows back to back. And that is that, oh, and an up elbow right there that split Kenny Porter open. And he was just kind of leaking after that. Ooh. He's really hurting, there. Camaro. Beautiful clinch work there. He's Elbows really back hurting. Back. He's hanging on his teammates. In the meantime, Dylan Salvador is standing in his corner, just looking at him. He is, but this is this is this is where you this is gut check time. This is what you this is where you know where you're what you're made of, because this is the career path that you chose. You wanted to be a fighter. You knew that this was the risk. You were going to be hurt, you were going to be beat, you were going to be bruised, you were going to be battered, you might have cuts, but how are you able to prevail? How are you able to handle that and keep coming forward? And, and Kenny Porter looks like he's ready to go here. He, he's telling the, the doctor that he's good, and the doctor looks like he's going to let him continue. I bet you the doctor said, I'm going to be keeping a really close eye on you. Uh, because that is the... That is the thing that Kenny, Kenny's got to know he's got fixed time here in this round. Yeah, my final adjustment, Salvador, he's got to keep this fight in the center. He's dominating when he is keeping this fight upright and, and he's able to move forward, land his beautiful Muay Thai. And for Kenny Porter, man, use that wrestling. Use that beautiful, use those shots, get the takedown and be able to, to control your opponent here. But Salvador's not playing any games. He comes out right away. Swing it, beautiful inside kick that buckled Kenny Porter there for a moment. Oh, uh, another. Uh, fighter adjustments brought to you by Dynamic Wellness Rejuva Centers. And, and Kenny Porter here pulls guard, and, and, and you know that's not what you want to do. Your wrestler, that's not where you want to, where you want to go. So one round for Savage Kenny Porter to try to turn this thing around. He is in desperate situation here. 
Oh, Salvador, he's got, it looks like he's got a, a, a anaconda choke in there, and that thing looks tight. That thing looks tight, and I think this might be the, the end of the fight here. Kenny's thinking this of might tapping, be the end of the fight. Does. Oh, my God. He, he does. Dylan Salvador comes from out of nowhere and destroys a prospect here tonight in Fort Lauderdale. Savage Kenny Porter gets his first loss on his career by an unknown fighter in Dylan Salvador. Salvador did everything right here tonight. This was not Kenny Porter not fighting well. This was Dylan Salvador bringing it. Wow. And that's how you make a professional debut right there. You Good. know, he said that he had all the Muay Thai experience, and it showed. He dictated the, 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 the distance of the fight. He dictated the tempo of the fight. He was aggressive, landed beautiful elbows, cut his opponent, hurt him several times, and he was able to get the finish. Beautiful job. This is the pain of defeat here in every way. You're defeated physically. You're defeated spiritually, psychologically. I mean, Savage Kenny Porter will be back. He is a warrior. But he is the kind of guy who really will take this loss hard because he, he really is in this sport for his life. Absolutely. He did everything right. He, he trained right. He, he, you know, I've got to imagine that he, he, his diet was on point. But it just wasn't his night. He just, his opponent came out. His opponent showed that he just, I, I, I wanted it more. And, and, it, and it showed. And you can see here, you know, Salvador, big inside leg kick in that, in that round, third round, just basically aggressive. He you went see, after his opponent. Uh, I mean, you see how he was pinpoint accuracy, the calmness and, and the accuracy of his strikes where it was just amazing. And every time Kenny tried to shoot, he was able to sprawl and avoid the takedown. And there you see him finishing the choke for the first, it, what a debut on the big, on the big scene here. Let's go up to Rodolfo Roman and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to an end at one minute, four seconds in the third round for your winner, by way of Anaconda Choke Dylan. Salvador. Looks like he could go out surfing, like, you know, in Santa Monica or Venice Beach. <laughs> that, that would, he's got the, that's a dangerous surfer, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. That's a dangerous surfer. He, he, he might kick the crap out of a shark. Hey, I mean, <laughs> he, he looked phenomenal tonight. Phenomenal. Yeah, he really did. He really did. Coming up next, Matthew Wagey. He's fought everywhere. He's won nine out of his last 10 fights, and he really feels his time is now. He feels due. He's angry. It's his time. He really, really feels it. And he's going to be fighting a, speaking of angry, they call him Bellico, short for war. A dear Terry wants to upset the Matthew Wagey steam train here tonight in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. All that and more coming up at you. Here's how they match up on paper. There you see both of these Bantam weights on the boat. She's a 10. What a great weigh-ins. That was a blast. Thank you, guys. And then you see, really, the only difference that kind of jumps out at you is the height difference. Terry might fight long here. Comparable records, comparable weight, comparable age. A little bit of a reach advantage for Terry as well. Uh, this one measuring up to be a classic Bantam weight. Could be fight of the night if it unfolds the way a lot of people think it will. And this tale of the tape brought to you by It's a 10, truly miracle hair care. All righty, there goes Rodolfo Roman. He had to wait for the Quentin Tarantino to get dried up up there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is in the bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Matt Wagey. They call him Hammer Time, Matthew Wagey. This guy's fun to watch. I always love watching a fighter who is, he's genuinely angry because he has done everything. He says, what do you have to do 
to get into the UFC. I've done everything I can. I've trained a team alpha male with some of the best fighters in the world, TJ Dillashaw, Uriah Faber, Cody Garbrandt, Chad Mendez. I train American top team with some of the best fighters in the world, Charles McCarthy, Charles Rosa, Roger Crawl, Ricardo Laborio. What do I got to do? And they see Roger Crawl. There you see Boston Strong right there, Charles Rosa. This guy has won nine out of his last 10 fights, and he is determined this evening to put on a huge show for the big boss. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's he's right to feel that. At one point, he was on a six or seven fight win streak, everything going right, but he still didn't get that call up. Well, you got your wish here tonight. You've got an audition right in front of the boss. Not too many people get that, and he does. So, you know, tonight you got to leave, put it all on the line and really show the boss that, hey, I've been deserving of a shot to be in that next organization. It's time to move me up. He was getting choked out by guys, by, by chokes that Uriah Faber, Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw could not put on him Some when he was best. in his fight. He was driving him crazy. It's a mental lapse. It's Absolutely. a mental lapse. You know, he's 12 and one as an amateur. This really is a world-class fighter right here. He's just gotta, he's just gotta put it all together at the same time. Absolutely. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Hey dear, Terry. Well, if you're going to say a fight has the possibility of being a fight of the night, you need two great fighters. And that's exactly what you have here tonight. There is Bellico, Adir Terry, fighting out of Caracas, Venezuela. Whereas we'll have to talk about at some point, big problems going on down there. He's in the Freestyle Fighting Academy, one of the best schools as well. Marcos Avalon, David Avalon, you see them both right there. You ever want to see a great fight? Watch Avalon fighting in Bodog. Oh my gosh, it's great fights down there. But there you see a dear Terry, and there you see the big boss and Matt Sarah. They're here for looking for a fight. And the big boss, you know, he'll be watching all of these fights going forward. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for these kids to try to make it into the same promotion that you're in now. Absolutely. I mean, this is not very many people get an audition in front of the boss. You, you rarely ever get the, an audition for the boss. You, you gotta just go through the, the guys, the superiors underneath to be able to bring you up before you get to fight in front of the boss. And these guys are getting to do this tonight. So, I mean, like I've mentioned several times already, you cannot hold anything back. You've gotta throw caution to the wind. Of course, fight intelligently, but you've gotta go out there and really state your claim tonight. Adir Terry's last fight was a loss. It was a decision loss to Hudson Calio Kane for the bantamweight title strap in Titan FC 52. He also had a really good fight to watch. If you can find it, you probably can go to Fight Pass and see it, where he fought Erwin Rivera, and Erwin Rivera had a nasty leg break. He did come back bigger, better, and stronger, but it was a nasty leg strike, and uh, Adir Terry felt bad about that. But uh, Adir Terry has come to win here tonight. He knows this is the most important fight of his life. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is in the bantamweight division, scheduled for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man walks in with a record of 12 wins, five losses. He's a mixed martial artist who weighed in 135.8 pounds, fighting out of Delray Beach, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt the Hammer Time, Wagy. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man walks in with a record of six wins, three losses. He's a freestyle fighter, weighed in 136 pounds, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Caracas, Venezuela, y Lima, Peru. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, and dear Bellico Terry. And when the action begins, your referee, Russ Greenberg. Okay, guys, went through the rules backstage. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Fight clean, fight hard. Good luck, touch them up. All right, 